Hi everyone, I'm Ben from the Merrimack Public Library and this is If You Know You Know Kitchen Survival. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make a stir fry. This is a great uh, quick easy recipe that is very versatile. You can use pretty much whatever veggies or proteins you've got in your fridge. Uh, so it'd be perfect for something like a weeknight dinner. So let's get down to it. So before we get started, we need to get all of our ingredients together. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use some boneless, skinless chicken breast for our meat. And for our veggie components, I've got some ca baby carrots. You could use uh, full-size carrots that are washed or peeled as well. Um, some snow peas, uh, bell pepper, and some scallions. So first, we're going to chop all our vegetables into bite-sized pieces. But before we do that, if you're planning to serve your stir-fry with rice, now would be a good time to get your rice going on the stove. Um, basically, just stick to the manufacturer's instructions. Combine rice with uh, the correct amount of water for whatever type of rice you're making. Bring to a boil over high heat, reduce heat, cover, and uh, let sit and simmer until uh, the rice is done and the water is all absorbed. If you'd like to see some tips for doing uh, short grain rice, you can check out the how to make onigiri video, um, which should have a box somewhere around here. And uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's cut up some vegetables. So I'm gonna start with some baby carrots. To review what we've talked about before with knife skills, you always wanna have a sharp knife if possible. A sharp knife doesn't take as much force, so it's actually safer than a dull knife, which uh, where you're putting a lot of your weight onto it, and if you slip, you don't know which way the blade's gonna go. Um, to hold your knife for most control, you really want to have your four, uh, forefinger and thumb pinching the metal itself. Um, tuck the rest of your fingers underneath, and you want to sort of feed whatever you're chopping into the knife with a claw-shaped hand with your knuckles out in front. If you can keep your knuckles in contact with the side of this blade while you're chopping, you know that they aren't going underneath where the sharp part is. So uh, let's chop up some carrots. And maybe the safest way to chop when you're learning is to sort of rock keeping the knife blade in contact with the cutting surface. And we want about a half a cup's worth of chopped carrots, but one of the nice things about stir fry is they're very, it's very uh, customizable. You can really adjust the amounts So let's move on to our pepper. I've got a red pepper here. I'm just going to cut right in half. And then I'm going to work around the inside here and cut out this white part. And just pull out all the seeds in one go as best I can. And then once that's done, we're going to chop this vert into vertical strips. Of about the same width. And then we're just gonna go across the tops of them into roughly bite-sized pieces. I'm going to throw in a half a green pepper for some contrast too, I think. Alright, there's our peppers. Now for our scallions. I'm just going to do a quick chop here. Now with these uh, scallions or green onions, they tend to be um, a little milder 
when they're darker green, the darker parts and a little stronger towards the white parts. All right, got our green onions. For our snow peas, I'm just gonna pretty much snap these in half. And we can move on to our chicken. So now we're going to do the chicken last so we don't get um, meat juice or raw meat juice all over our cutting board and then use it for vegetables. And this is sort of the same thing. We're going for roughly one inch cubes. You can trim off if you see this um, sort of stripe of fat here. You can chop that off. We're just going to try to cut across in roughly one inch pieces and then chop up that a little further. and our chicken's all done. So now we're gonna go wash our hands real quick before we do anything else. So before we get to cooking, we should talk about our sauce. Stir fry is one of those recipes where it really helps to have everything set before you start cooking because things go pretty quickly once you've actually got things in a pan. So um, we're gonna mix up our sauce and uh, this is another area where it's very versatile and you can really combine a lot of different things for different uh, flavors. But I've got some honey, um, some soy sauce. This is a Japanese brand, but you can use whatever kind of soy sauce you've got. Um, you're gonna want some ginger and some minced garlic. If you, uh, you can buy them pre-minced and pre-grated, uh, uh, or you can grate your own. We did some uh, ginger prep in the uh, smoothie episode, uh, which will be somewhere over here. Um, and uh, for a little bit of heat, if you like that, I've got some crushed red pepper flakes and a little bit of cornstarch. This is going to help our sauce thicken up at the end. Um, lots of other options you could add here. You could put in a little bit of uh, chicken stock or something for like a thinner sauce. You could add some hoisin sauce, which I think would make it a little um, sweeter, perhaps. Uh, you could add some like fish sauce or oyster sauce, um, all kinds of different possibilities. Uh, but this is what I'm going to go with. So let's get down to it. Okay, so we're going to start with a quarter cup of soy sauce. And a quarter cup of honey. Honey, and we're going to want a tablespoon of minced garlic. And a tablespoon of grated ginger. These are all things you can somewhat eyeball. And then maybe just a sprinkle of red pepper flakes. For a little extra, a little bit of heat, not a lot. And we're gonna whisk this together until it's combined. And we're just 
just about ready to go. Heat some olive oil in a large skillet or wok if you've got one over medium, medium high heat until it's uh, shimmering. While our pan's heating up, we can season our chicken with a little salt and pepper. Now once your olive oil is fragrant and shimmering, you can go ahead and add your chicken to the pan. I'm trying not to crowd it. You're using a non-stick pan like this, some rubber tip tongs are a good alternative to a metal spatula for moving all these sticks sticking around. Once your chicken is spread out in the pan, let it sit undisturbed for a few minutes. Check periodically to see if it's starting to brown on the bottom, and when it is, flip it over. So you can let this go until the chicken's no longer pink inside, which should only be maybe th two to three, maybe a couple more minutes, uh, depending on how big your chicken is and how much, uh, how high your heat is. Uh, if you've got a meat thermometer, you can check uh, one of your larger pieces. That's let's see, 163, which is uh, close enough for yeah, 167 which is uh, past the chicken's uh, minimum heat. So I'm gonna take this off of the heat. Uh, and to avoid overcooking the chicken, we're gonna let it come out onto, and take it out of our pan while we cook our vegetables. So we're gonna throw a little bit more olive oil in here. Let that coat the pan, heat up, and we're going to reduce our heat to medium for our vegetables. All right, and now we can add in our veggies. So for our thickener, we're going to start with two tablespoons of water, and we're going to add two tablespoons of our cornstarch. Equal amount of each. One. And two. And then we want to whisk this together until no lumps remain. We just have a watery slurry. is boiling. We've got our thickener. We'll go ahead and add the thickener to this. We want this to boil with the thickener in it for 
about two minutes to activate the thickening properties of our cornstarch. So we want to return this to a boil, let it go for another minute or two. So it gets thick and glossy. Yeah, the sauce is sort of sticking to everything a lot more now. It's our cornstarch working for us, basically. When you think it might be getting done, just grab a veggie, see if it tastes ready to go or if it needs a little longer to cook. And when it's all done, dole out a portion and serve. So there you have it, our nice simple stir fry. I like to garnish right at the end with some scallions. Uh, you could also add these during the last minute or two of cooking if you want them to cook through a little bit more and sort of mellow the taste a little bit. And uh, dig in. So there you have it, a quick, easy way to make a stir fry that's very tasty. I uh, hope you guys try this one out. hope you play around with it a bit. You could put really whatever veggies or protein you want. You could try some onions in there. Um, you could try broccoli. Uh, you could go completely vegetarian. And I uh, hope you guys experiment with the sauce, see what you like um, in combination. Uh, but until next time, I've been Ben from the Merrimack Public Library. Bye.